All right, well, you know, uh, Thomas and Margie are here, and we've spent like the last almost hour waiting for the rain to uh, <laughs> stop so we could so we could not yell, have to yell at each other uh, because this metal roof uh, makes quite the little noise when it's a heavy rain. And uh, just like within the last five or ten minutes, um, it came up. Uh, well, it stopped raining, and it came up in my conversation with Thomas that he and Margie have in fact done the online marriage thing. And I, and I, was, and I told him that up until like four days ago, I never even knew such a thing existed, that you could get married online. And as I under, and I just brief, briefly learned a few things about it on a live stream like four days ago. And at that time, I, had, I was under the impression that it was just a one-way thing, that it was just uh, a means for um, uh, couples to get together so that they could come into the Philippines. Uh, but Tom, Thomas is telling me that no, uh, it can, it's a two-way street now. You can actually uh, become married online. This is this is what I'm not real clear about. So, do you have to wait for, like, say, if you if you and Margie wanted to go back into the states, do you have to wait for the spousal visa to be approved? Yes. Okay. And that's like a two-year wait if you're married. I hear. I hear a fi I hear a fiance visa is like six months to a year, but a spousal visa is one to two years. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I think, uh, as of a couple months back, the spousal was running eight or nine months. Really? Okay, so it's, it's sped up a bit. Because I have the guy that built this condo place. He's an American. Uh, he married his wife here, and they're still here five or six years later. And he put her name in the hopper for the visa uh -huh. uh, through the same company we're using. And we're running behind them, maybe six months from when we put ours in. Can I can I ask you, if you which which company you're using? We're using Rapido Visa, Rapid Visa. Rapid Visa. I, I've heard of them. Everybody that I've run into that's doing a visa said they use them. Now, uh, I've heard everybody said, yeah, you got to use somebody, and uh, I agree. I I'd be the first to say I'm not overly impressed with what they gave because their service mm, I think where it would pay a dividend is at the last minute when you submit all your documents to them and they're going to submit them with your money onto the government of the US uh, they um, they don't have a staff uh, they don't have any anywhere close to a legal background. Okay. These are people that can only work off a script. So if you're asking a script type, you know, like a like FAQ, frequently asked uh -huh. questions, if you're doing that, they can bring it up and read it to you. If you ask them anything else, they can't tell you. They'll just say, "Oh, I don't know." It's like going to McDonald's and ordering a Big Mac without the special sauce, right? It just it turns everything into a train wreck. Well, yeah, but, but they, it's like they're the cashier at McDonald's, and if there's not a picture of whatever it is you want, they can't they can't get it for you because they don't know how to do that. Right. They can only take the Big Mac button and push that. So, so you say if you ask them a question about the visa application and what this, what that, if there's not a button, they can't tell you. All right. So we were talking, you were saying that... But, but in all honesty, I think when they review your pages, and they apparently have three different review process, three different people will go through it yeah. looking for errors. So that, that way they can correct it before it goes to the government. Because if it goes to the save, government and, and it gets rejected, then you're... Then you're... No, they, well, they're generally they're not going to reject it. They're going to hold it for a question. Oh, okay. But a, a month for you to get the question, a month for you to respond to the question, so... You kiss two months goodbye. So, oh yeah. Okay. And what they are is a time save. So, my my question is so, um, well, one of my many questions. So, uh, you and Margie are now married. Um, what was the what was the process, and how hard was it, uh, from the Philippine side, from the Philippine government side? Um, did Rapid Visa handle that as well? 
No. no, this was all something different. The only thing Rapid Visa can do. Did you go? Uh, excuse me. Did yeah. you go through a? Did you go through an agency to facilitate the online marriage? We went through a, 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 a corporation that does online marriages for apparently anybody in the world. I don't even. My understanding is, uh, I could be very wrong on this, but I think they were telling me that you could be two people, citizens of two different non-U.S. citizens, and like um, Russia and Czechoslovakia, or something, right. and get married through the U.S., through the U.S. Uh, um, state of Utah process. Wow. And now, I could be wrong, but I think that's exactly it. Because Margie's Filipina, I'm American, she's never been to the States. We're trying to get the visa to get her to go back to the States with me. Uh, and there's a lot of steps to go through from, uh, from I'm her sure. and me. Now, mine are easier in the U.S. because of first world infrastructure. Right. But for her, oh, you know, and especially if you're born on a different island and you've got to request the birth certificate, you got to, you got to start requesting there's a, there's a lot of stuff. And if, uh, if a, uh, a, a friend of mine was thinking about doing this as well, and if your if your uh, fiance, if your intended spouse, was ever married before, like if she's a widower or is legally separated, you have to. She can only do it in her maiden name, and that is like uh, an impossible thing uh, here. Uh, to have all her uh, official government recognition documents transferred back into her maiden name. It can be done, but it is not... Uh, I have heard that. You, you'll be fought at every step of the way. Yeah, I have heard that. So, bottom line is, you can get married online. And, uh, and when you came to the Philippines, you're recognized as married. The Philippine well, government recognizes your marriage, right? I, did all the steps necessary from within the United States with the Philippine government through the counselor office in Chicago and eventually through the counselor office in San Francisco, which has jurisdiction of the ROM, Report of Marriage for the Philippine government uh, in the state of Utah, which is the state recognizing our marriage. Okay. Now, interesting, I am a resident of a different state. But it doesn't matter. You in the U.S. If you say I, you want to have an I do, you can have an I do. And this company did set it up 100% legal. So all the marriages go through the state of Utah. All the same place, the same uh, clerk's office in the same county in the state of Utah. Can I ask you a personal question? Sure. What did it cost you? Oh wow. <laughs> you don't have to answer. No, no, no. I'm not afraid to answer. I don't know about that. But I, I don't want to give you a bad answer. And I, and I did Wild that. guess. Well, you, you have to pay the service their fee. You have to pay the state their fee. What was the service? Then you fee? have to pay you uh, the Philippine government's fees. Okay. So you have. Do you remember what the service? Uh, uh, you can do different options of. Uh, of service with them, you know, there's like, uh, if you want the special magic sauce, you pay extra. Uh, for doing things that make it faster, smoother, easier, you pay for that. Okay. Uh, you want to have something... Uh, to have it expedited. If you want to have it expedited into your hands in 24 hours or 48 hours, they can do it, but you're it paying ain't 500 free. bucks for it. Or something. Right, it's, it's, gotcha. it's nuts. But if you're in a hurry, maybe 500 bucks is peanuts. Who knows? You know, it's an individual thing. Me, I, because I'm retired, I always say, I don't have time to waste. I'm not wasting time on stuff. If I can get it faster, I do what it takes to get it faster. Because whatever date my card is going to be punched on this life, it's, it's still on schedule. I'm not changing. So did Margie have a passport? A Philippine passport. I think she does have a Philippine passport. She does. All right, did you? She you, got it way before me. You were saying but that. But she's never been out of the country. Oh, okay. It's never it, been stamped. Because you were saying that um, there is the option to where you could come into the country together, into the Philippines. No, no. The when when we did it, uh, it was required for uh, for entering the com country on the 9A tourist visa. 
which was the one that they used to issue on on arrival. Uh -huh. well, they don't do that now. You got to get it ahead of time from your consulate in your country. Ah, uh, okay, good so, to know. So, um, the requirement shifted, uh, and it said, if you want to return to the Philippines, um, you have to be married and uh, to, to show up. And they didn't require anything other than being married, proof of marriage, but you have to prove that to your local consulate. And my, mine at the time was Chicago, right? Okay. So um, I couldn't prove it, I wasn't married. But it was the only way to get back. Now, I had already purchased a condo, we made our plans, we fully intended to get married, but now it was like, okay, well, what's going to happen next? Are we waiting for the next shoe to fall? Or So I throw the dice and say, well, I don't know what they're going to do in the future. I'm going to do what, everything I can as fast as I can to get through. And if I had not done that, within the 90 days of when I came through the port of entry, they changed the rule. I could not enter, even as a spouse, I couldn't enter alone after that 90 day passed uh, unless I was traveling with my wife. You'd be traveling together. So now do you have meant she so, would have to leave the country, right. meet me someplace else, and return with me. Is that the rule now? It is the current rule. So, so what you do uh, is. Meet in Macau or you, you Hong could, Kong or. A, a, a foreigner can meet in anywhere, right? Because right? they they don't their government doesn't tell them. Well, under COVID, who knows about that? But generally speaking, any of us could go anywhere and meet somebody uh, as long as you could pay for the ticket. Right now, um, I had also been told that Filipinas, young, especially the younger women, uh, uh, get a lot of scrutiny at an airport if they're traveling alone. Uh, and their and their answer to the question of what are you doing, if it's it's I'm going to go meet my boyfriend, I've heard that they will pull you out of line and tell you you cannot board the plane uh, because uh, of the uh, white smuggling, you know, women trafficking women, and they don't want you to be trafficked. Right? So that's the government uh, does what it wants in the, those respects. Right. So what what's happening now under COVID? I don't know, but and I. I would like to go back to the U.S. I have things to attend to, but I'm concerned now, if I go, would we have to meet in a third country for me to come back in? And if we want to meet in a third country, would they hassle her getting out of this country? Because, you know, they're saying here, oh, we don't give visas for tourism right now. I looked at Mexico. I would love to meet her in Mexico, which one is real close to where I live. Yeah. Right. Uh, two, there's a lot of stuff going on in Mexico, and Mexico is a very free country right now. They're their president. Well, I, I would I would assume that theoretically, uh, she could just say she was going to work somewhere, right? Just going to be an they OFW. Would ask the ah, the contract. Ah, gotcha. They have it pretty sewn up. So, start to finish, how long did the online thing take? When you and Margie decide, let's do it. Um, how long did the... Well, this was September 2020. Uh, I picked a rather fast date once we lined up the ducks. you got to line up the ducks. you got to pay the bills. Uh, you got to have the paperwork that's going to be required by the, the state of Utah, by uh -huh. the county. Uh, paperwork that's required by the, the firm you're hiring. There's Paper, paper, paper. Paper, paper, paper. So you got to get everything stuff. lined up, and some of it had to be uh, FedEx, you know, overnight, inter, uh, not overnight, the international air travel uh, package. Uh, that was a hassle during COVID. Oh, my God, you couldn't get anything out of here. You, you literally, and I, I, I actually, <laughs> I actually phoned the phone number of the CEO of FedEx in Memphis, Tennessee, and left a message and said, hey, where is my envelope? <laughs> and you know that was on a Friday night when they were closed. On Monday morning, I got a phone call from his secretary saying, give me all the details, we'll look into it. Wow. And that that package came to my door in the Midwest, oh, three days later. Special delivery to my porch. Wow, I, and that and was I at thought, the height of COVID, oh, right? 
Huh? And that was at the height of COVID. Yeah. So they could move things if if the boss said move it, it'll move. But if you're nobody, well, that's it pretty typical uh, of any uh, of any situation. Plus, in the Philippines, uh, international um, logistics, they're not from like if you're, if you're dealing FedEx, FedEx doesn't own the local stuff. Right. That's like that's a third true. party. Right. So. Y uh, in the U.S., if you go to FedEx and you give them something, even if they come to your door, they pull out a scanner, they scan that, and it goes right into their computer, and you can track it from that moment forward. Here, Margie would take something in, and I'd say, well, give me the tracking info, send me a photo. There was a moment. We didn't, what scanner? Who's got a scanner? Right. What's a scanner? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so you so, go on faith that somehow they didn't lose it when it goes to Manila to get on the plane, they scan it. So it you know, for, so for a would, lot of the time you're wondering, am I am I moving forward? It's a lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah. yeah. So how so how so September of twenty twenty? September twenty twenty September thirty, twenty twenty uh, is was our uh, our wedding. And, um, and you'd began this process in? I'm going to say we could have started it uh, as late as September 1st. <coughs> you know, so it, it 30 been, days? It could have been 30 days the window. I could be wrong. There could have been more delays in there. Well, that's incredibly fast. I thought it was. But you had your foot on the gas, right? Any way that you oh, could save any, time. Any, I would say to people, uh, how much will it cost me to expedite? Because well, really, I remember my my guiding light was, I'm not getting older. I mean, uh, younger. Right. I'm only going one direction. TikTok. So, so if I die and I have money in the bank, what goes that to me? <laughs> it won't do me any good. Yeah, there you go. So that's my rationale. I'm not Diamond Young Brady. I'm a man on a mission. That's a difference. Yeah, there you go. So, so a month is not, let's just say two months even. That's not uh, that could two be, months that is could not be very accurate. Two months is not. Uh, I have to look through you know personal notes to know exactly. I, I could find out from the notes because I saved everything in the process. Um, but uh, you know uh, I didn't even hear about it. I I logically went through uh, in my mind. This is the 21st century. Uh, I can sign documents anywhere in the world and have them uh, authenticated anywhere in the world, and it's good to go. You just have to do it the right way. So then I'm thinking, well, maybe there's a way you can do a marriage the same way. Signatures, faces, blah, blah, blah. So I start Googling, and I hit a couple. And I read a little bit, and I look at their website, and I'm thinking, oh, kind of rinky-dink-winking. Uh -huh. I don't think I can trust this. They want way too much money for a gamble, and the money, I'm going to say maybe the first number they tossed out was like 1200 No, it could have been 1500 could mm -hmm. have been 22 I don't remember. But I'm, my, I'm guessing about 1200 bucks to get going. So, you know, you don't just throw 1200 bucks at something. Right. I mean, you've got to so, do a little bit of research. So I, I did some diligence. I, uh, I went to um, YouTube, much as I dislike the way they treat people. Uh, I went there and I did a lot of research. I found another couple that had just gotten married. I saw their video. Uh, I contacted him. Uh, and then I found another couple that had done it. Was you know They were a month ahead of me or two months ahead of me and went through Chicago. So I started reaching out to people doing the shoots, saying, hey, you know, let's, let's talk. I, I have a, I'm following your footsteps. Help me out. And they did. They, they all did. Um, and that gave me the confidence that, yes, it works. Yes, it's there. Yes, this is legitimate. You can this make is it happen. And it can happen. So well, honestly, you know, there. like I said, up until four days ago, I had no idea. Because I was still on the old school. You have to meet in person in order uh, to get the spouse of visa rolling. Well, you, you had to meet in person before you could get, you know. You had to, you had to meet in person before you could even get married. You had to... Well, you we, had meet. we qualified on all of those little relationship things we had met. I had spent a month already here. It wasn't like we'd never met. Oh, okay. We had agreed, uh, so are we had agreed on the condo together. Are those prerequisites for the online marriage? You don't no, have to meet, no, right? Yeah, okay. No. 
No, I don't think I don't think there's a prerequisite like that. So for someone, for a guy who is wanting to eventually uh, get his, eventually marry his girlfriend and and be able to uh, take her back to the West, the United States in particular, uh, the online marriage is the way to go because it would it would get that process started because then you could get the the spousal visa. Uh, if, you, rolling, if, right? if your only goal is to get your Filipina into the U.S. Uh, and get married in the U.S., you can do that. There's no reason. That, there's nothing that says that. For me, it was getting myself into, into the Philippines because yeah. I already bought a condo. I've been spending several months now on the Internet picking out tile and, you know, arguing with the builder. And, right. You know, I'm, I'm expecting to come back to a finished unit. And have a place to live with my but you can't, my soon to be wife. Right, but you can't get into the Philippines unless you're get married. In, catch twenty two. Yeah. So that's when I said, I'm gonna have to investigate. I'm not gonna just give up. There you not, go. Not in my nature to just give up. So I did the research. Turns out my intuition was correct. Uh, I brought it up to Marge. I said, I know this is not anything what we talked about, but if we don't do this, who knows when I get in. And as it stands, I still wouldn't be here if we hadn't done it. You'd still be waiting. and still, still wouldn't know I when it would happen. I would still be in the States. So uh, we did the right thing. And, you know, like I said, we, we talked about we could do another ceremony with family and friends mm -hmm. when the cloud of COVID goes away. Or we can do a, just a reception and celebration. I mean, there, there you go. Something. Something. Uh, so the ceremony in the U.S., is 100% valid in the U.S. Uh, and that can be evidenced by the fact that the Philippine government accepted it as a valid marriage. There's, there's a special reporting mechanism called the ROM, Report of Marriage, which a Filipino has to do uh, at the foreign embassies to say, uh, I got married. Right? I didn't get married in the Philippines, I got married someplace else. And here's the paperwork so that the Philippine government will acknowledge it and give me that legal status. Yeah. And they did, no and, problem. And they did. Now, there's always a hurdle. There's always a roadblock. I don't think the government liked it one bit. I had one guy that I had to deal with in the uh, embassy, uh, name unmentioned. Um, do you know who you are? Uh, he, he didn't want to cooperate. He did, I, I could feel he didn't like it or something. And I, it's funny because I talked to another guy who used the same embassy or consulate, and, and he knew the name and said, yeah, yeah, I, I know him. He's, he's like that. But so, you know, you, you get over some of that stuff. But um, it can be done. You keep your head about you. Uh, if you only want your wife to come see you, then I think the decision is, do uh, you, you need to be married before she applies for the visa? Or you just let, you know, well, you can apply spousal or you can apply fiancé. Yeah, well, the fiancé, my understanding in the past, the fiancé you had to meet face-to-face. -face I don't know. To get a uh, fiancé visa. I don't know, because we did meet, so. And a spousal visa, well, of course, you have to be married. You, you have to, it's a spousal visa. So, uh, uh, so before, you, visa? you know, how, how would no, you. Know. How, you could be a, who could be a, a fiancé and never meet. Why not? We have online, and it's almost like the real field. Well, right, but uh, the fiancé visa, a prerequisite for the fiancé visa, was a face-to-face -face meeting. That was that was the whole deal in the oh, past. I, yeah, yeah I, you, don't know, you, I didn't go down that path. Yeah, well, that, that that was a requirement, and because of international travel restrictions, that no, wasn't that's not happening. Happen, no. So you, the the fiancé visa was out of the question. Spouse visa, same thing. Yeah. Uh, even uh, you know. You can't get married, you know, before you couldn't get married unless you were holding her hand and slipping the finger and slipping the ring on the finger. Uh, and that couldn't happen because you couldn't get here on a tourist visa. See, that was the whole that was the whole circle tiger chasing their tail thing that was going on for the last 18 months. And uh, again, I, I don't know how long the online marriages have been going on and have been recognized. But I myself only heard about it, like like I say, four days ago. 
Yeah, that's a it's an interesting question. You know, their website they might actually say when they started. What was the name of it again? I didn't say it yet. Oh, you didn't say I, it. You yet. didn't ask. And I, I didn't ask. I so. wasn't going to just throw it out. I don't just throw out names. Uh, it's a web wed uh, wed w e d like wedding uh, and web the web web. Wed, web web so it's uh, web wed web wed what Margie. Web, web, or web, 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 yeah, web, 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 those, web. Those, those, so those six. Don't say, try to say that three times uh, fast. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's those six letters. Web, W E. Web, wed. <laughs> you know, if, the if Elmer Fudd in me is going to come out yeah, in any if, second. If, it, if it's not web, oh, web, then it's web. You know, the, it's the opposite. And it's web, web. You, you could, if you Google it, you'll find one it. or the other. All right. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about that. They've they have grown exponentially. Uh, I I'll understand bet they're they doing, were swamped. I, I'll bet they're uh, doing I've, a boom. I would business. guess, although I have not checked, I would guess they have a lot of competitors. But this place is uh, proven in that they have. Uh, completed the tasks necessary to make it legitimate in uh, a United States state, uh, in a county in the state, uh, through the clerk's office. They issue all the certified stuff you need. They give you the international uh, a notary. Everything is there. It's, a, it's, it's legit. Well, I think the proof is in the pudding, because here you sit. Yeah, here I sit, yeah. I got in then, and... and, and yeah, I'm, and I, as far as I'm concerned, it was money well spent. Is it something that you could have done yourself? Oh, I heard one of the other guys say, yeah, I could do that myself, and I'm going to say, no. you would give up before you got there. Too many herbs. First of all, you'd have to know exactly who to talk to in that exact office. Right. Well, what's the likelihood in somewhere in the, in the world you could find that clerk in that office in that county in that state in the U.S.? I don't think so. It just, they, they package it so that you, you almost cannot refuse. And I don't know what they went through, uh, maybe what's this cup? I don't know what they went through to, um, to work with the state. I, and, and I don't know. I didn't ask any questions because I didn't care how did they do it. But I did think, if you wanted to set it up, what would you do? How would you start this process? Then I thought, you know what, I bet it starts with the county clerk. If your county board of supervisors doesn't say, oh, no, no, don't do that, then the clerk's office could say, you know, that might be a clever thing for us to do. And then they say, okay, now how is it, what do we have to do to make this work? What are the safeguards we have to build in? And, and they made so, it happen. You know, and uh, they want documents. It's not, it's not like you just jump on the internet and you're done. You got to have documents, documents, documents. For every step in every country, in every place. Documents are the key. And you got to have all the normal things. What's your birth certificate? Um, if you've ever been married and divorced, we want your divorce certificates. Everything that went through on your life, they want it. The, the, the state wanted it uh, to get married. The county wanted it. Uh, the Philippine government wanted it. Everybody wants everything. And, yeah. and the Philippine government doesn't want everything. They want four copies of everything. <laughs> That's the Philippine government. And each one notarized independently. With a two by two photo, right? Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, two by two photo, front, back, and side. Yeah, it's it, it's detailed, and I I bless whoever could do it by themselves. Good luck to them, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean it, it won't be easy. If, well, if you don't have I'm, any money, uh, then I guess you try it. But I'm going to end this one up. I think it's uh, quite a bit of information uh, for me and everyone else to uh, assimilate and process. But uh, there you go, guys. You, uh, the online wedding is a, a doable, a real and doable thing. Um, you know, I don't know if it's something that people would be interested in or not, but I find it interesting. Uh, so we'll end it up here. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Thomas, for uh, uh, sitting thank down. Thank you, and, Brian, for sharing me your homestead. And uh, and well, we we had to we got about a, a minute and a half into the uh, tour. <laughs> And had to run back to the house because it was uh, quite evident 
that uh, the rain was coming, but uh, we might get out and, and, uh, and uh, do another attempt. But thank you for uh, uh, sitting down with me and trying to explain to my feeble old mind what this uh, online marriage is all about. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.